Always good to be shooting videos back against the orange wall again. Hey guys, it's Carl, and this is actually one of my first TV reviews of the year, and the main reason for doing this one, typically when people ask what TVs I recommend, it's tough because I have a bunch of really expensive TVs at home. I'm decked out with OLEDs, really expensive short throw 4K projectors. This is the LG QNED, specifically the 75 inch. This one doesn't break the bank, it's not as expensive and thankfully still has a ton of premium features packed in, especially when comparing the price points. So big shout outs to LG for sponsoring this episode for more relatable content that I can actually recommend TVs that most of you, some of you can afford. So like I mentioned, this is the 75 QNED. This is based around their mini LED tech, which is LG's most premium LED set in their lineup right now. And it's packed with their latest tech. It also combines that with quantum dot and nano cell tech from LG, which gives you brighter colors, deeper blocks. It essentially just makes everything look way better without you having to do anything. And compared to those four to $500 TVs that don't have any AI processing, the difference in image quality is pretty big. And I know it's so tempting just because of the price, but if you are a stickler for for good image quality and you want something to look half decent, you know the route that you have to go through. And if you guys have seen my studio previously, or I'll just show some B-roll clips of around here, you can see just massive windows everywhere. It's incredibly bright. I don't even use my OLED anymore during the day. And while I'm here at the studio playing games, watching some content during the day, this is the panel I use solely because the reflection or the glare isn't as bad. So quickly through the design, and because this is one of the first TVs that I've reviewed this year, I almost forgot how large 75 inches are, especially when you consider the size of the box. So definitely need two people to uh, set it up. And what I love about this TV is how flush or even the entire width is. People rave about OLEDs or other TVs in general, how thin they are, but that's typically just two thirds of the panel. And when you look down on the bottom, third there's typically this giant wedge on the back so even if you wall mount that it will still stick out as much or as thick as that bottom wedge is which actually makes this ideal for wall mounting it does have a visa mount option you do need 400 by 400 i couldn't do that to the orange wall and i do just have that mounted on this little tv stand and pretty much for the rest of the design tvs are the same bezels are super thin. They're not razor thin as I've seen on, once again, I'm gonna compare that to OLEDs, but I rather save $1,000, $1,500, get something with slightly thicker bezels. We're not talking anything extreme, giant forehead, old 90s TVs, they're still pretty thin. And uh, to save that extra bit of money, I would definitely choose this over an OLED. I think you get way better bang for your buck. Ports wise, you are rocking four HDMI, two of which are HDMI 2.1, which gets you 4K at 120 Hertz. We'll get to that once again when we talk about gaming. Three USB and optical digital. And the best part for that wall mounting, all of those ports are mounted sideways so you can get really close to the wall. And lastly, inside of the box, my favorite thing of all time has to be their Magic Remote. It is by far the best remote for any TV brand. And trust me, I've reviewed a lot of TVs. It is just so simple to use. You can just point at the TV and you can see that the little cursor comes up. It just makes navigating the UI so much better. Maybe one thing to improve on LG, I have seen some TVs with little solar panels or even something to recharge by USB-C. It is still rocking AA batteries. Thankfully, some come in the box. So to the nitty gritty and actual performance of this, I'm not gonna get too, too technical. Pretty much everything that I've been watching and crushing on this TV has looked great, whether that's 4K Dolby, HDR. I did watch the finale of Obi-Wan, which is super dope and I'll keep it short and sweet. I won't leave any spoilers here, definitely go watch it. It does have a full array local dimming pro display, which makes it a lot better than those budget TVs. I know that there are ones that you see on Amazon, five, 600 bucks for the same size, but that's the biggest difference as those are typically edge lit. That really, really helps manage the dark and black levels. And I find compared to those cheap TVs, those are the areas that look washed out, even a bit gray, especially with new content now being shot in low light, dark areas. You wanna have those nice and crispy, obviously not as deep or as black as an OLED, but for an LCD panel, this is probably some of the best that you're gonna get. And if you are someone that likes to watch a ton of movies, they also have a really cool feature called filmmaker mode which turns off some of the internal processing and lets you watch the movie as it was intended or envisioned by the director. That will preserve things like frame rates, aspect ratios, or colors. And for everything else, it has the Alpha 7 Gen 4 AI processor 4K. I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but essentially it has a really good processor to upscale all your images to make them nice and smooth. 
Okay, moving on to gaming, which is something that I sadly don't get as much time as I'd like, but when I do have little bits of downtime, I do like to kick back, relax, and play a couple games. I'm not super competitive. I know that all PC people will say, you gotta play PC, bro. You gotta be on a monitor, 240 hertz. For the casual gamer, or someone that's just a bit more chill, doesn't have a dedicated gaming setup, still wants to rock some really good gameplay, especially for next-gen consoles. So if you are Team PS5, I think a lot of you know I am a pretty big Xbox guy, so I am rocking Xbox Series X. So in terms of gaming, I did mention the two HDMI 2.1 ports. So for next-gen gaming, it does take 4K at 120. And what I do love, it automatically recognizes when you have a console plugged in, you just hit the settings button, and up pops game optimizer. So this pretty much shows all of your game settings, which FPS you're rocking. You can even change some of the modes if you want. It does have AMD FreeSync, which gives you variable refresh rates depending on what game you're playing. So I'm typically still rocking a ton of Halo, still trying to make my way through the Mass Effect trilogy or the remastered version and rocking some FIFA 22. Just because of the new EPL season, I'm gonna plug my fantasy team or my fantasy league, which I will create. I know that we have an earlier season, the World Cup in Qatar this winter. Who else is stoked? Getting off track again. Um, this TV is honestly great for gaming. It's one of the main reasons why I stick to LG TVs for gaming because of that game optimizer, because of that high refresh rate. I'm not saying that this is the best setup. TVs have come a far way the best experience and best performance you'll get is still over on PC. PC bros, you can relax now. It's still a really good option though. For sound options, it sounds decent out of the box. I still recommend most people for their main TV to hook it up to some sort of sound system, whether that's a sound bar, having surround sound, whatever you know your jam is. Like I said, it does sound half decent. I will leave some of my favorite speakers or sound bars listed down below. And I think that pretty much wraps up my first TV review of the year. So of course, if you're interested in the QNED, links down below, let me know your thoughts. Are you team OLED? Are you team LCD? I know this is just so much more affordable and I know it's so tempting to get sucked into those cheap four to $500 TVs, but if you're at that option to spend a bit more and you want some really good quality without of course breaking the bank all the way up to what you've got over on OLEDs or even you know, one of those short throw projector 4K things that uh, cost thousands and thousands of dollars. I think this hits a really sweet price point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I um, think that's pretty much it. I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.